Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Once again, I have my Link A12 sextant in the background and we're going to talk about how we use that sextant to get a three star fix using something called a circle of equal altitude. Now a circle of equal altitude is basically a path on the earth that is at an equal distance to the geographic position of a star. But more importantly, anywhere along that path, if you were to take a sighting of the star, it would be at the same altitude to your local horizontal. Now, for example, if you were to assume Polaris was directly above the North Pole, a circle of equal altitude would be something like the equator, where at every point along the equator, the altitude of Polaris would be zero degrees. So let's cue up the music and learn about circles of equal altitude and revisit three star fixes. Now, let's go ahead and have a look at something called circles of equal altitude. Now, the circles of equal altitude seem to be a major source of confusion. They like to look at this right angle right here at the geographic position and think that it means something other than the fact that's the geographic position of the star. Well, what is the geographic position of the star? It's aligned from the star to the center of the Earth, and the geographic position is the location on Earth where that star is directly at the zenith at 90 degrees overhead, hence the right angle. That's just a right angle to the tangent line at that location. And the tangent line, as you know, is a line that touches the circle of the Earth at only one point, and that is the geographic position. Here is a point on the Earth that is at 60 degrees north latitude. Now, from the section that we just had, we know that if we took a sextant reading here, there's our tangent line, there's our vertical, there is our line to Polaris, parallel to this one, we know that that angle is 60 degrees. And this angle is 30 degrees, because that's a right angle right there. And that's the other right angle that we have just simply to define where this point is on the surface of the Earth. Now, how far is it from here to here? What's this angle right here? It's 30 degrees. Now, if we draw another line over here, I think that you'll agree that if that's at 60 degrees as well, that that will be 30 degrees, that will be 60 degrees to the equator. If we were to shoot a sextant reading right here to the North Star, that would be 60 degrees. Because like on the other side, that's how we define our latitude. Both these points are at 60 degrees north, and as a result, the altitude to Polaris is 60 degrees for both of them. Now, you got right here in the center at 60 degrees north, what would the altitude to Polaris be? 60 degrees as well, by definition. So, if you look at the 60th parallel, the 60th degree of latitude, that forms a circle around the top of the Earth. And at every point on this circle, the altitude to Polaris will be 60 degrees because it's the 60th north parallel. Now in this case, the 60th north parallel would be a circle of equal altitude to Polaris, the North Star, which is directly over the North Pole. Now likewise, if we had a star out here directly over the equator, and that was 10 degrees north, and that was 10 degrees south, again, we would have a circle of equal altitude because both of these angles would be 80 degrees. You see how that works? So this would be half of a circle of equal altitude 
towards that star at 80 degrees. Now, in addition to having problems comprehending scale, people in the science denial community have a little bit of difficulty thinking in three directions. They think that when you say circle, you're talking about a circle on a flat plane, and all of the area of that circle is on a flat plane. It's not. We have the Arctic Circle around the top of the Earth. It forms a circle. It's on a globe. The equator, along with the Arctic Circle, they are both circles of equal altitude for a star directly over the North Pole, as we talked about here. They're circles on a globe. Simply because you hear the word circle, do not assume that it's a circle on a whiteboard. Here's a cap off a container of orange juice. The rim of this cap forms a circle. It fits on a globe very nicely with no gaps. It fits on a two-dimensional object very nicely. Simply because the rim of a cap is a circle, which is normally a two-dimensional object, you can still put that circle on the surface of a sphere. So let's see why circles of equal altitude are important in celestial navigation. Now before we go on to that, there's one other thing that I want to cover in this circle of equal altitude. One of the things they've been making a lot of hay out of recently is the fact that there are right angles here and here. They seem to think that because there's a right angle there, there has to be a right triangle and there has to be triangulation based on that right triangle. That's not the case. The only th reason that we have these right angles is to show that this line is perpendicular to the surface of the Earth because it's at right angles to a tangent line at that surface of the Earth. Same thing up here at the geographic position. Once you've established that those lines are perpendicular to the surface of the Earth by saying that those are right angles, we can ignore them and just take the line to be perpendicular. Now again, this angle is exactly the same as that angle. This is the angle right here that determines the latitude, and that's it right there. It's the altitude of the star. Now, how far is it from here to here? Well, it's that number of degrees, because that number of degrees is that number of degrees. So what's the distance? Well, if this is 60 degrees, that would be 30 times 60 miles per degree, that's nautical miles, equals 1,800 miles. Everywhere along 60 north latitude is 1,800 miles from the pole. Now, do you remember our talk about the flagpole? Recall that if we had a flagpole and we thought we were out here, and this distance was the same as that distance, that would be a 45 degree angle. All right, what if it's 46 degrees? Are we closer or further away than that point? We're closer. If it's 40 degrees, we're out here. Where does that come into play on navigation? Well, say we think we're here at 60 degrees north latitude, and we shoot a measurement to Polaris, and we find that the angle to Polaris, this angle right here, is not 60 degrees, it's 65 degrees. Okay, where are we? Well, we already know the answer. We're at 65 degrees north latitude, we're not at 60. But let's go ahead and just kind of figure it out real quick. Now, if we were to look right here and say that at 60 degrees, we should see an angle of 60, and we see 65, that means that we're one, two, three, four, five degrees closer to the pole. How far is that? It's five times 60 miles per degree. We would be 300 miles closer to the geographic position than we thought we were. Okay, so how's this used with navigation? Say you have three stars and their geographic positions are on the same great circle diameter with you in the center. Now, as a result of that, their circles of equal altitude will all be the same. Now, you draw one circle of equal altitude right here. 
you're going to be somewhere on that line. Then you go down to the next star and you draw a circle of equal altitude for that star as well. You're going to be somewhere on that line. Now, if you do it on a third one and get this circle of equal altitude, you're going to be somewhere on that line. Now, while these two circles meet at two different locations, the only place all three of them meet is right here. And that is your location. That's the concept behind circle of equal altitude. Now, there's one more concept that I want to give you, and that's something called the three star fix. And it involves doing this. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply this to real world navigation. Say that we're running along and we want to know where our position is. We think that we're right there, but we want to find out for sure. Well, We've got three stars. We've got one star in that direction. We got another star in that direction. And we have a third star in that direction. Now we plug in where we think we are as far as our latitude and longitude. We go to the Naval Almanac. We figure out what the bearing to each of these stars will be. And then we figure out what altitude we would expect them to be at if we were indeed right there. So say we've got 55 degrees here. We've got 60 degrees there, and we've got 42 degrees here. Now, if we were exactly at that position where we thought we were, that star would be at 60 degrees, because we're on that 60 degree circle of equal altitude for that star. On this star, we would be on the 55 degree circle of equal altitude, so we would read 55 degrees. Likewise, over here, we would read 42. Now, you may recall from our earlier discussion, if we have a flagpole and we think that we're right here, and this distance equals that distance, we can read this angle and we would expect to get 45 degrees. Now, if we got more than 45 degrees, well, if you point at the top of the flagpole and move closer, your hand goes up, the angle goes up. Likewise, if you move further away, the angle goes down. That's simple perspective. So say we get this reading right here and we read 55 degrees. Great. What we can do is we can draw a line right there. We are indeed on the circle of equal altitude for that star of 55 degrees. And because it's a very small segment, we don't have to draw the circle. We can just draw a straight line perpendicular to the bearing to the star. Now, say we get over to this star right here, we expect to see 60 degrees, but instead we get 62 degrees. 62 degrees is larger than 60 degrees. So are we closer or further away to that geographic position that we thought? We're closer, say we're here. Well, we draw a straight line there. Now, what about this one right here? Say we expect 42 degrees to that star, but we read 40 degrees instead. Are we closer to the geographic position of that star than we thought we were, or are we further away? We're further away. Say we're here. So we draw another line there. Notice that all these lines come together here. That's our actual position. That is where we thought we were, but we're really right there. Now, I'll have another video on doing these when I start using the A12 link bubble sextant. Because in addition to doing noon sites with a regular sextant, we're going to do some three-star fixes with a bubble sextant at night. And we'll be going into this in much more detail. So let's sum this up briefly and just kind of go over what we went over in this video. Number one, big distances. There are big distances between the Earth and the Sun and the Earth and the stars. As a direct result, light from these celestial objects arrives at Earth essentially in parallel. That is a foundation of celestial navigation, that light from the Sun and the stars and the planets arrives at Earth in parallel. Number two, circles of equal altitude are not two-dimensional objects. The Arctic Circle 
is a circle of equal altitude to the North Star, assuming that the North Star is directly over the North Pole. The 60th parallel is a circle of equal altitude to the North Star. The equator is a circle of equal altitude to the North Star. Because anywhere along one of those circles, you will read the same altitude to that celestial object. And that altitude, and that of course, is this distance right here. Now, the distance from here down to here is that angle right there. That's the number of degrees. If this angle is 10 degrees and that angle is 80 degrees, you're at 80 degrees north. Your altitude to the North Star would be 80 degrees. That means that your latitude is 80 degrees. The distance you are from the pole is 90 minus 80 degrees, which is this angle and 10 degrees. Now, at 60 miles per degree, that means that you would be 600 miles from the pole. That circle goes around the top of the Earth like that. That is a circle of equal altitude on a sphere. It is not a two-dimensional circle. Third, triangulation in celestial navigation involved is not a triangulation of a right triangle where you're trying to find one of these legs. The triangulation is when you take three circles of equal altitude and find out where they all come together. That's your position. That's the way a three-star fix works, and that is the only type of triangulation that you use in celestial navigation. You do not have to have a flat line to this right triangle. That's not the type of triangulation we're using. Finally, at the end of our last video, I gave you all a little bit of homework to test and prove to yourself that the Earth is not flat. And here's what it was. I said that 2,700 nautical miles from the North Pole, the angle to the North Star was 45 degrees. Look familiar? So how high is the North Star? 2700. Then I said move this position out another 2700 nautical miles for a total of 5400 nautical miles and tell me what that angle is. Now, on a flat plane, that angle would be 26 and a half degrees. And you can check that on a triangle calculator. In the real world, that angle is zero because that would be the 45th parallel, that would be the equator. And the reason that that happens is that Polaris is not local. Polaris is 132 parsecs away. Its light is coming in in parallel. This will read 90 degrees, that will read 45, and that will read zero at the equator. It's just as simple as that. The fact that it does read zero at the equator, it conclusively proves that Polaris is not local. It's very distant. It conclusively proves that the Earth is a sphere, and it conclusively proves that light from Polaris comes in in parallel. So, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. Remember to hit that like and subscribe to this channel because we really appreciate your support. I'm getting some equipment upgrades. I've just bought a bubble sextant for the channel and we'll be making some videos on that. But until the next time, take care and stay well, people.